Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Today, in the gospel, we heard exactly Jesus saying to all of us that Mary sat at the foot of the Lord and was listening, listening, listening. So that's what we are doing in this Eucharistic adoration. And that is what the very, very great thing available to us. So in our life, how much time we are able to spend time with the Lord. The Lord is with us, but we are engrossed with so many activities. <laughs> That's why although Martha is doing, serving to the Lord, but still Jesus says, you are worried about many things. You are worried about many things. Why are we worried about many things? We are worried about many things because we are not concentrating to the Lord. My name is Thomas Paul. I have been in the Lord's work for more than 33 years now. Thank you. Thank you. I was an engineer by profession. Everybody appreciated my work. I did so many great works in India, but the Lord called me, give up everything and come to work for him. And that happened by a voice. I heard a voice. The harvest is abandoned, labors are few. Can you go for me? I thought it is a word written in the Bible, but then later on I realized he exactly wanted to ask me, can I go for him to evangelize? So I said yes. From that time, my life became completely different. And I began to experience the gifts of the Holy Spirit already in me through baptism, confirmation, already the gifts of the Holy Spirit in me. The very moment I began to speak in tongues and prophesying and uh, proclaiming and healing all the charisms. So then only I realized every Christian, not only every Christian, the whole humanity is in Jesus. Now look at this beautiful picture in front of this ambo. It's written Alpha and Omega. And from that comes a beautiful flower that shows the creation, creation. And this green symbolizes the creation. When we hear Jesus and his word, uh, I tell you, in India, the official language of India is Hindi, Hindi. <laughs> Hindi is not a language of Hindus, it is a language of India. And in that Hindi Bible, the first word of John's Gospel, translated by 
a belgian priest who came to india learned hindi he is the one translated the hindi bible the first sentence of gospel of john he translated very very specially it says aadhi mein shabd tha in the beginning was the voice voice whenever we listen whenever we think about the word of god word we first think about something written something spoken by human beings but it was not so because no human being was existing in the beginning when god first spoke if we know the voice because it came from a mouth of a human being god was not having a mouth you understand god was not like a visible person first understand can you imagine that situation in the beginning there were no human being god was not in a human form god became man after many centuries to incarnation but before that he was voice he was voice so in greek it is known as logos in the beginning was the voice in the beginning and that voice become man so we know the incarnation and that man is also god so he is man god he is man and god prince that books can you bring me that catechism so i am referring to why jesus said mary has chosen the better part <laughs> coming to the gospel what mary did she was sitting at the feet of the lord and was listening 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 so this listening the voice of god in our christian life we generally think we are searching god we are seeking god but more than that god is seeking us like suppose you were a little child your mummy your papa was holding on your hand and leading everywhere that is why jesus said be like a child so we always think we must hold the hand of the lord no if we hold the hand of the lord <laughs> sometimes we will leave his hand and go to our own way that is not think about the other way jesus is holding on our hand that is why he became man god sent that eternal word become man to hold on us 
when he holds us, he will not leave us. Think again, when we were little children, our daddy, our mummy, suppose we are crossing the road, we, they hold our hand. Because otherwise the child may go here and there and accident can happen. So we have to have a different concept about our relationship with God and man. Nammalude manasil devam nammalumayitrulla bendam endanam nolladine oru pudhiya bodhyam A new concept. That is what Jesus brought. Once a Mother Teresa sister, I was giving a retreat for them and she said I was in the town and uh, I wanted to evangelize a woman. She refused. She said, no, 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 don't talk to me about your God. Every religion, religion has God. Every religion go to God. Every religion take us to heaven. So this Mother Teresa sister said, sorry, please, our Lord came down from heaven to earth. He is not, he is, he left heaven and came down to you. What? God came down? God is in heaven? No. He left the heaven. He came down. Namada Devam Surgam Vitaragi Manishanai. Manishan de Kai Pitiche Manishana Surgati Kuduva. Our Lord came down and became man to take every man to heaven. And it is not something which is going to happen. It is already accomplished. Already accomplished. That is our faith. So that Jesus made his presence. So in the Holy Eucharist, we often understand the real presence. The real presence. What means the real presence? What is another presence other than real presence? Jesus also said, where two or three gather together in my name, I am there. Two or three gather together in my name, I am there. That is also a presence, but that is not the real presence, that is a spiritual presence. God is in us, that is also a presence, but that is a spiritual presence. God, who is spirit, entering in our life and living in our, pres in our soul. His spirit. The Ivatmava Namade Atma will Vasikano. That is also presence. Other Devatina Sanitivan. But what is real presence? Real presence is God is physically in front of us. He is a person. A living person with body, blood, soul, divinity, reasoning, everything. That is why whenever we come into the presence of the Lord, we adore Him. So, now I will connect all these things together. 
So Christian life is a life led by this living God, living God. Often we have struggle, problems, difficulties. One of the reason is we go away from his presence. We don't experience his presence. So that is where we say it, we need a healing or we need a we need a different types of prayers. In the Catechism of the Catholic Church, that is the very important teaching, which paragraph 469 teaches us that Jesus is God and man at the same time he is our brother, our brother. 469. The church thus confessed that Jesus is inseparably true God and true man. Jesus is inseparably true God and true man. Inseparable. His divinity and his humanity is inseparable. Yeah. You are googling to get it. CCC 469. 469. You can google then you can get it. Catechism of Catholic Church 469. We know Jesus is God. That is not enough. We must also know that God came down. He left the heaven. <laughs> he came down, became man, truly like us, exactly like us. Devam Manishanai Namle Pole Ulla Yatharta Manishanai. And that is how we say he is our brother. So he is truly the Son of God who, without ceasing to be God and Lord, became a man and our brother. You know, sometimes we go to some very important persons for recommendation. Oh, you know, your brother is the boss of that bank. Can you ask for a recommendation for me for a job there? Okay, I will try to talk to him. <laughs> because your brother is a boss of that bank. Now think about, we have a brother, he is a big boss. <laughs> what is he? Who is he? He is God. He is God. We have a brother, who is he? He is God, Almighty. Can you imagine? such a brother. So our God experience is very easy to understand. It comes from a relationship, relationship. Relationship. God is our father. It's a relationship. It is not like a legal Entity is a relationship. So that was the problem in the Old Testament. They recognized God is a judge. He will come. He is very punishing. He will be angry. 
it's a legal aspect but jesus came and immediately he said god is our father so what is father if god is father who am i i am his beloved child so what is the meaning of that meaning is it's a relationship that is why jesus taught a prayer when you pray pray in this way our father our father he did not say my father he did not say your father he said our father our means what my father and your father is same jesus as father and your father is same so so it is a relationship my father is also your father so who are us what is between us we are brothers and sisters very easy to understand no complication <laughs> that is why among all the prayers the prayer jesus taught is the most important prayer it is completely different than all the old testament prayers in old testament it was forbidden to call god as father they never address god as father because the incarnation has not taken place so 2000 years back when the incarnation took place it is a historical event historical event means god become man and he took all humanity in his body in his body that is called incarnation all humanity in his body in the latin mass during the preface preface is the prayer after the before consecration it is truly just to praise god then we say there is one of the preface prayer o lord through your incarnation you have reconciled us with the father and renewed our fallen state through your passion you cancelled our sins through your resurrection you have given us new life through your ascension you have taken us into heaven therefore with all the angels and seraphims and saints we sing hosanna so we must recognize through incarnation God became man. He became our brother. And he already <laughs> rectified the defect happened through Adam. Through incarnation you have reconciled us with the father. I say in Malayalam, Angayide manishyavadarati lude yang nyangale Pidavumai tanirengi pikki gayu 
என் சிறுமலபார் லிட்டர் ஜீவிசே அங்கையுடைய தெய்வீக ஜீவனில் ஞங்களை பங்கு ஆராக்கான் அங்கு ஞங்களுடைய மனுஷ சபாவம் சீகரிக்கையும் ஞங்களுடைய அதப்பதிச்ச அவஸ்தையே புனருத்தரிச்சு ஞங்களுடைய புத்தியை பிரகாசிப்பிச்சு என்றோ இட் இஸ் ஆல்ரெடி டன் we must believe through god coming down as man the whole universe is divided changed that is why we are in christian era today is 8th of october 2024 where from this Tate Kaim, whatever religion you may be, you are in 8th October 2024. <laughs> Why? It is era of the Lord. And what happened before 2024? That is before Christ, B.C. that is another era that is cut off we call it ad ad means ana domini domini means the lord god's era so basically we see so many intellectual interpretations of so many things but spiritually universally the whole universe divided through the coming of christ we say i am christian somebody is hindu muslim sikh punjabi parsi but god has no difference the whole humanity in his body like one person all our brothers and sisters so when we say i believe in jesus christ <laughs> we say i believe in jesus christ but what we mean by that is jesus is a private property of catholics or christians alone no Now today's first reading Galatians St Paul says I was a persecutor of Christians I wanted to kill Christians why he thought the salvation is only for Jews he thought everyone should be legally in legally bound to obey the commandments but on the way to damascus a light touched him jesus touched him his life changed that jesus transformed him he went with his free will to kill christians his free will is still there but the free will is or i say another way his free will was a distorted free will because of the original sin all of us has free will but what is the basis of our free will our free will come from the adam's nature the very word adam come from it's a hebrew word namely from the earth from earth adama from the earth and the meaning of word jesus the word jesus means what is the meaning of word jesus 
word Jesus means God saves. God saves. Word Jesus means God saves. Welcome. I often ask people, do you know what is the meaning of the word Jesus? <laughs> so many people are saying so many things, Savior, Redeemer, but it is a Hebrew word in Catechism 430 says, yeah, I got it. <laughs> Jesus means in Hebrew, God saves. At the Annunciation, the angel Gabriel gave him the name Jesus as a proper name, which expresses both his identity and his mission. In identity, he is God. Mission is Savior, saves. So God saves. The word Adam means from the earth, from the earth. So we must recognize it is not our fault that we are all basically originally children of Adam. So we have a earthly nature. So our free will is also earthly nature. Always inclined to earth. Don't mind, I tell an example. Suppose you have come to UK, you got a good job. Now what is your next aim? To buy some earth. <laughs> Correct? You need an earthly existence here. We need to buy a house. We need to have a little land. Earth. Earth. Earthly nature all earthly possessions. But once you come to Christ, <laughs> He comes from heaven. The bread from heaven. And He changed our basic nature from the earthly nature to heavenly nature. Then we feel we are a citizen we, we are a citizen of heaven here we are like a pilgrimage we have a visit visa some people ask me Thomas Paul I am mostly in Germany I am not a citizen of Germany but I am I have a lifelong visa in Germany for evangelization. So often many other evangelizers ask me, how you get it? Normally one should have a very good job and good salary etc. to get such a thing. But I have a lifelong visa because I really had a deal with the Lord. The Lord gave me this. You are a citizen of heaven, but I am sending you as a <laughs> pilgrim visitor. And can you believe this? Although I have some earthly properties in India, I have my home, but I never feel I need a home. I don't go there also. It is there. Because I feel I am a citizen of heaven. Even the Eucharist we celebrate here. Do you know? At this time, now, up in the heaven, there is continuous worshipping going on. We are having an extension of that here. You know, some area on a Sunday Mass, the church is full. 
So what people do in the basement, but here I don't know whether there is a basement here. Some churches has got a upper hall and the basement. So what they do, they make a projector in the basement and people sit in the basement and they watch the holy mass happening in the upper room, in the church, in the basement. You understand? Urvala Alkar Alapa Pali the basement Alkar Irtit Projector Vachit Molil Narakana Kurvana Tarigani. When the church is so so much people, this the celebration happening in the main hall is projected through a video projector with this type of a camera and people in the basement watch that. Exactly that is what we are doing. We are in the basement of heaven. This adoration and the Holy Eucharist is actually happening continuously in heaven. In heaven. In Catechism, paragraph 1100. One 137 37 The book of Revelation of St. John Great Church Liturgy was revealed to us a throne stood in heaven throne stood in heaven with the one seated on the throne the Lord God it then shows the Lamb standing as though it had been slain, Christ crucified and risen, the one high priest of the true sanctuary, the same one who offers and offered, who gives and is given. Finally, present the river of stream of water, Holy Spirit. So, what I want to say is, the real liturgy, the real adoration is happening continuously in heaven, which is called the eternal liturgy. In Malayalam, it says, Sanadana Aradhana. Sanadana Aradhana. Okay, now I will summarize. Our God experience comes, our freedom comes from relationship. God is more than a legal entity, He is a loving, tender loving Father. Now look at, a mother has come here with a little baby. You see how she is caring that little baby. We all know that. We all have little babies. How much a mother and father care the little baby. Exactly that is how the Lord is doing with us. With that understanding we say, Our Father. who art in heaven. So we should not think heaven is like a place above the sky, but we believe it is in symbolic. How can God who is omnipotent from Alpha to Omega can be in a place? So heaven is actually a state of life. In Catechism 1024 says, Heaven is the perfect union with the Holy Trinity and Blessed Mother and all the angels and saints. It's a state, not a place. 124. 1024. 
the perfect life with the most holy trinity the communion of life and love with the trinity with virgin mary the angels and all the blessed is called heaven heaven is the ultimate end and fulfillment of the deepest human longings the state of supreme definitive happiness ur avasthaya jeevithathile etthum aanandagaramaya ur avasthakkana heaven aa avastha devavumayittu pidavum putranum parishuddhaatmavum പരിശുദ്ധ അമ്മയും വിശുദ്ധന്മാരും ആയിട്ടുള്ള നമ്മുടെ ഒന്നാകലിലാണ് ആ വലിയ സന്തോഷം ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് വൈ ഇൻ മെനി ഓൾഡ് ചർച്ചസ് വി ഹാവ് ദ സാങ്ച്വറി വിത്ത് ഓൾ ദ സെയിൻസ് അപ്പോസൽസ് സെയിൻസ് ആൻഡ് ഓൾ ദ ഏഞ്ചൽസ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ടു റെപ്രസെൻറ്റ് ഹെവൻ വി ആർ പാർട്ട് ഓഫ് ഇറ്റ് ഇൻ you know in catholic church catholic church is not only the roman catholic church that is the latin church church has 24 different churches one is the roman catholic latin church but in the catholic church along with the latin church there are other 23 eastern churches zero malabar zero malagara byzantine coptic church so and so so and so why i want to say in one of the or many of the eastern churches uh, now like the way of the cross you see the way of the cross is uh, on that level a little more lower all the saints pictures are exhibited now we can say this also saint joseph saint albert why they are all in this level because they are with us we are with them we are with them and they are with us okay coming to the point of the real presence Jesus's eucharistic presence is a real presence he has become man and he lives with us now is the very important point what happens when he lives with us when we eat him when he drink him what happens is very easy that is the first miracle jesus did in the wedding at cana cana ile kalyanathinu vellam veenai endinaanu vellam veenaakkidu in the wedding at cana the water become wine now all of you are educated people we know in the science what is the molecules of water water is oxygen and hydrogen jesus just blessed this water and abruptly the molecules of the water completely changed what is the molecules of wine molecules of the wine is CH3 CH2 OH <laughs> what is the molecules of wine CH3 CH2 OH it is a molecule of ethyl alcohol the point we want to understand is is this is there water in CH3 CH2 OH is there oxygen and hydrogen no that basic nature 
was completely changed radical change you know what means radical the word radical come from radish root 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 radish root that waters that water is god's creation he is the creator god he can do what he wants with his creation but at that time nobody understood as they thought he is the son of a carpenter from nazareth he is also invited in the marriage feast when the wine was over his mother said their wine is over so first he said so what what are we to do for them but there are inner inner communication between mummy and mon my son <laughs> so that's another mystical aspect that mary herself is the first new wine in in the person mary there is already a radical change happened that is the mary's immaculate conception means mary was born without the adamic nature then whose nature she possessed whose nature the nature of her son i will explain it little later let me complete this water becoming wine why do we have to learn this this is the first miracle happened according to john's gospel so the real presence of jesus in the blessed sacrament when we experience the real presence through holy eucharist that when we offer our life in the eucharist we saw now today that the father is mingling a drop of water with the wine what happened to that water that water disappeared it mingled with the wine its nature changes and that wine water mixture is offered it become the bread of christ and the bread which is offered become the body of christ this radical transformation was actually what he was showing in the wedding at cana i have come so that i will change the creation the whole creation i will change but beginning with the human being so when we when we participate in the holy liturgy when we receive the holy eucharist his real presence come into us so what was our presence we had a adamic presence that adamic nature is like water now what he will do the water change to wine oh i get such a strong goosebump <laughs> you got it so we have something called healing of family tree you know healing of family tree it is very simple jesus changed not only our one person the whole family tree the one who is in christ is a new creation second corinthians chapter 5:17 says the one who is in christ is a new creation the old passed away the old is like the water 
So this is not our work at all. It is the work of God. We have to only believe it. When we believe in this, we see a change. You know, I was, <laughs> when I was an engineer, I was very much smoking. I was smoking very, very terribly. I was smoking. I wish the children should not hear this. <laughs> I used to smoke 30 cigarettes a day. 30 cigarettes. Everybody blame me. I also blame myself. Why I am not able to control it? Why I am not able to come out of it? I used to also drink little alcohol or whiskey. I am not able to change this. But I did so many exercises and ways how to change it, but nothing happened. But one day, when I came into the life in the Holy Spirit, I realized my body is a temple of God. This Christ lives in me. The Holy Spirit lives in me. Oh, I should not smoke in a temple, in a church. Although I was smoking cigarette so much, but even while coming to the church, I used to smoke, but stop near the main door and throw it. Correct? This is how many people do. So, I, Because we have this sense of understanding, church is holy, there I should not smoke. Now, it happened to me, my body is a tabernacle, a temple, a church. It is holy. I don't know, from that day onwards, a change happened in me, a radical change. After that, I never ever smoked or drank. And so one by one, I began to work out understanding the principle of the change. And that is how our life becomes holy, 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 holy. And in this way, we have to believe. So we can see in St. John's Gospel, Beginning from chapter 1, in chapter 1 itself St. John says, Whoever believes in him, whoever accepted him, have received power to become children of God. They are, our, they are not from the human nature, from the blood and flesh of the human being. Avane Sigarichavarkum, Avanil Vishwasichavarkum, Deva Makalagan Shakti Nalgi, our Manishende Agrahatilino, Manishende Rektatilino, Allah. We were biologically born from our parents, from the flesh and blood of our parents. But that is terminated. And we become creation from God. That is the first chapter of St. John. Do you believe this? That you are a child of God by accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior and believe in Him? Do you believe the water changed to wine in your life? What do you think? Can you believe it now? Just make an action of believing. Yes, Lord. I now believe. 
I eat you. I drink your blood. I am filled with the Holy Spirit. My old nature is terminated. That water is changed to wine. Believe. Now believe. First chapter of St. John. Whoever accepted him, we have accepted him. Whoever believes in him has power to become children of God, has power. What is that power? And in word 18 says, a very important passage, 118. No one has ever seen God. Aha, I got it. No one has ever seen God. The only Son, God. So whenever we think Jesus as Son of God, we must recognize He is Son of God, the only Son, God. He is also God. Who is at the Father's side has revealed. So when we say who has the power of the Son of God means the one who believes in him, Avani Sigarichavarkum, Avanil Visarichavarkum, Deva Makkalaga and Shakti Dali. The one who believes in him, the one who accepted him. He has given power to become child of God. Not ordinary life. Not ordinary life. The wine, the water changed to wine. So Saint Augustine used to say, whoever a Christian become what he eats. <laughs> he eats Christ. So what he will become? He will become another Christ. Yes, we are. Now you can see the whole gospel of Saint John. Chapter 1, we understood. Whoever believed in him, whoever received in him, him, become has power of child of God. Avanil Vishwasichavarim, Avanil Sigarichavarim, Deva Makalai. Water changed to wine, chapter 2. A radical change. What is chapter 3? Chapter 3 begins with a man, Nicodemus, came to Jesus and said, No one can do such signs unless. God is with him. So this man realized what sign he is talking about. According to John, the first sign performed was in the wedding at Cana. That means this man was also there in the wedding feast, actually, in a wedding of the town a very important person of the town must be also there. You know, I have made a lot of animation films. This is one of the animation films I made. So while I was writing the script, the Lord in, inspired me. It is not only chapter 2, we have to, un, we have to incorporate chapter 3. The first sentence is actually an extension of chapter 2. <laughs> Nicodemus said, no one can do such signs unless God is with him. So what is that sign he is referring to? The sign happened in chapter 2. So Jesus answered, no one can enter into the kingdom of God unless he born again. 
unless he born again that is referring to the same sign unless your basic nature your original nature change like water change to wine nicodemus did not understand because he is completely with the old testament ideology in old testament for them god is like a judge he look what wrong thing you have done he will judge according to what mistakes you have done but that is only a preparation for the new testament so nicodemus said born again how can i be born again now i am already old how can i go into my mother's womb then jesus again said unless you born from the spirit and the water the spirit is holy spirit water is the word word eternal word so chapter 3 is also about a radical change so in chapter 3 jesus said God so loved the world he has sent his only son that who ever believes in him have eternal life we generally think eternal life is something we receive after death is it is it said like this he said who ever believes in him has eternal life when 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 you believe do you believe now yes so now all the eternal life started in us we are in the eternal life when we receive the holy eucharist uh, the priest is not saying it louder but he says the body and blood of christ for the forgiveness of your sins and life eternal ഈശോമിശിയായുടെ ശരീരവും രക്തവും ഗ്രഹങ്ങളുടെ പ്രതിക്കും പാവങ്ങളുടെ ബോധനത്തിലും നിത്യജീവനുമായി വിശ്വാസിക്ക് നൽകപ്പെടുന്നു ഈശോയുടെ ശരീരവും രക്തവും ഗ്രഹങ്ങളുടെ പ്രതിക്കും പാവങ്ങളുടെ ബോധനത്തിലും നിത്യജീവൻ ബോഡി ആൻഡ് ബ്ലഡ് ഓഫ് ക്രൈസ്റ്റ് ഫോർ ദ ഫർഗിവ്നസ് ഓഫ് യുവർ സിൻസ് ആൻഡ് ലൈഫ് എറ്റേണൽ സോ ജീസസ് ഈസ് ഹൂ യുവർ റിസീവ് മൈ ബോഡി ആൻഡ് ബ്ലഡ് ഹാസ് ഹാസ് എറ്റേണൽ ലൈഫ് വെൻ റൈറ്റ് നാവ് റൈറ്റ് നാവ് so eternal life is not something which we receive surely we receive after our death but it already began now that is the in kingdom of god that god has become man to merge with man so the eternal life entered into man so what was man's life before that temporal temporal animalic life a vegetation a vegetable you cut finished it's bio so when god become man it is like this now this is our human life before incarnation left hand that is temporal when god become man the life eternal came down 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 whoever accepted him whoever believed in him he took and his life become eternal now this left hand our temporal life is united with christ so what happened to our life it become eternal god who is eternal came down merged with the man who was temporal before incarnation historically he took the whole humanity in his body and from that moment whoever believe in him become eternal
That is called good news. Sussamajar, Suvishesham. Endana Suvishesham. What is the good news? Good news is God become man, man become God. Good news is God become man. For what? It is <laughs> difficult to say. We are afraid to say. When God become man, entered into man, for what? To make man become God. In the Catechism, paragraph 460, I got it, 460, the incarnation, the word became flesh to make us partakers in the divine nature. For this is why the word became man. The son of God became son of man. So that man entering into communion with the word, the word is God. Eh? So when we enter into communion with the word, thus receiving divine sonship might become son of God. Then another great church father, Saint Athanasius, writes, For the Son of God became man so that we might become God. Then Saint Thomas Aquinas, the only begotten Son of God, wanting to make us sharers in the divinity, assumed our nature so that he made man might make man God. So, in St. John's Gospel, chapter 1, chapter 2 is the radical change of water, change to wine. So that is the same thing Jesus is telling in chapter 3. Chapter 3, a great scholar of the Jewish community, Nicodemus, he spoke to him this truth about this change. Chapter 4, Jesus meeting completely a different person, a woman, a Samaritan, not Jew. If Nicodemus met Jesus in midnight. Jesus meeting Samaritan woman at noontime. See the contrast. <laughs> Nicodemus, a Jewish leader, came in the midnight to meet Jesus. He came to meet Jesus. But in chapter 4, Jesus going to meet not a man, a woman, at noon time, where she is alone, and we know the whole conversation. To make the story short, what happened in the life of this woman? Water changed to wine. In few minutes, when this woman got into the real presence of Jesus, God become man, met this woman, they had a conversation. What is conversation? The word. He spoke a word. That word is God that penetrated into her heart, transforming her like water changed to wine. In few minutes time, she said, I know the Messiah is going to come. You know what was his first reaction when Jesus said, Can you give me a little water? I am thirsty. What? You are talking to a... You are a Jew. I am a Samaritan. Why do you ask me what? There is nothing common between Samaritan and Jew. This was her first nature. 
atomic nature <laughs> water you know any any even any atheist person will be inclined to give a water if somebody is asking at noon time hot sun to give a glass of water but she refused so that was her original nature she don't want to have any communication with jesus but jesus did not go away jesus kept on kept on giving her the spiritual food the divine word the divine word started penetrating into her and jesus said if you drink this water you will thirst again i will give you a water if you drink that you will never be thirsty eh? oh then give me that water see one minute back she said there is nothing common between you and uh, me now she is telling give me that water see already the change started happening correct her attitude is changing see the change why the change because the divine presence of jesus his mercy his word his word is changing her then communication goes on give me that and then jesus said yes yes i will give you call your husband oh no no no, no. i have no husband yes you said it rightly you have no husband you had five husbands but the one with whom you are now living is not your husband hey who i see you are a prophet i would say this is the shortest biography of a person jesus said in one sentence <laughs> you had five husbands but with whom you are now living is not your husband so this has lot of interpretation it may be true because in those days in the jewish law or in samaritan law if a marriage if they are not able to live together because of various reason it was allowed to divorce with their legal status and marry another person so he said you had five husbands not any other relationship you had five husbands so it was a legal relationship but with whom you are now living is not your husband there is another interpretation in those days a person who really believe in god that is considered as a marriage those people who don't believe in the true god believing in the uh, uh, what we call idolatry what is another word believing in false gods that is considered as like a prostitution that is considered as unfaithful to the divine law so it is also true you have been worshiping so many gods thinking they are god but now you are worshiping something that is not even god in your that is why she is asking now where is the real worshiping your people say god is in jerusalem our people say god is in mountain now jesus said woman believe me 
the true worshipper will worship God in truth, in spirit. Oh, see now change is becoming step by step. I see you are a prophet. Now she says, the Messiah will come. When he comes, he will teach us everything. Now Jesus said, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. He, you are the Messiah? He worshipped him. And she immediately left that place. I must go and tell everybody. So a transformation change happened. Water changed to wine. Her life completely changed in that few minutes communication with Jesus. She became the first woman evangelizer and chapter 5 a man was lying at the Bethsaida pool for 38 years can you believe somebody lying at the pool site paralyzed 38 years that is even before the birth of Jesus with all the Jewish people's ministry, nobody ever cared to do little mercy for him to take him into the water. So Jesus came to him abruptly. Do you want to be healed? He began to say, Lord, no one is helping me. When the water still, somebody jumps into it, but nobody helping me. Jesus said, come on, get up. Take up your mat and walk. Now see the word, power of the word. The word has that power. This man was lying 38 years paralytic. The word penetrate into him. A radical change happens into him. His body started moving. His paralyzed hands started having vibration. His blood vessels energizing. <laughs> his legs become straightening. And he started getting new power and energy. And like a resurrection, he stood up. Water changed to wine. Yes or no? Yes or no? A radical change. Chapter 5. Chapter 6, he is explaining this happens through the power of the sacraments. Whoever believes in me must believe I am the living bread come down from heaven for the life of the world. So some people could not accept it. They said we cannot accept to eat your body. So they did not understand what was the spiritual meaning what Jesus said? They went away. But Jesus asked, do you also want to go? And Peter said, where shall we go? In you only the words of eternal life. So that is the theology. That is the real core of Jesus' teaching. I have come to give you life through my body, through my blood, so that you will change like water changed to wine. And chapter 7, the living water, he said, whoever believes in me, come to me and drink from me. 
living water will flow from your heart change chapter 8 a woman who was caught in adultery was brought to jesus and according to the law of moses if a woman is caught in the act of adultery she must be killed she must be stoned to death stone such a big stone like a size of a football they will throw the stone straight in her head and the head should break that is how the execution was done if a woman was caught in the act of adultery imagine so they are going to do it but somebody said let us check what jesus is going to say let us take her to jesus and they came jesus was in the temple area teaching they came to jesus and said master this woman is adulterous she was caught in the act of adultery there are witnesses one two yes 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 we saw that that is enough for the execution two witnesses they brought the two witnesses now they are checking jesus what is he going to say will he obey the law of moses law of moses said such woman must be killed tense the situation for some time jesus is quiet silence and then he began to write on the floor in the sand what could be his writing it was written in the book of isaiah and new law will come from me <laughs> i assume that is what he is writing i brought a new law so they look no 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 we don't want any new law we have the law of moses that law says every woman who was caught in adultery must be stoned to death what do you say so they are already going to stone so they are telling we will now stone her others said no no wait a minute let us see what he is telling wait hold on hold on and jesus very quietly said yes stone her but if any one of you who has no sin let him first stone her so this man who are standing with the big stone this word touched their heart this is a stone her but any one of you who has no sin he did not say who don't do sin who has not done a sin he says who has because through original sin every human being has sin except jesus understand jesus said if any of you who has no sin let him first stone her this man the executioners of moses their hands becoming weak the stone fell down and they all gone back one by one water change to wine in whom in whom into this scribes and pharisees who were the executioners of moses their heart changed they could not execute they could not execute the capital punishment 
water changed to wine. And now Jesus asked this woman, My child, have they not condemned you? No, Lord. Imagine her situation. She was sure now her life will end. She was sure they will stone her and her heart, her head will break. At that situation, imagine her heart, how painful. At that situation, Jesus' word touched her. Yes, anyone who has no sin, let him first stone her. That itself started giving consolation for her because she knew all men are sinners. <sighs> Change started taking place in her. Now she said, No one condemned me, Lord. Oh, Lord, thank you, Lord. Jesus said, Go, I too do not condemn you. I have come not to condemn, but to save. This is what we have to understand. We think in our family tree, lot of immorality, lot of bad things. But Jesus has already taken over all the bad things. Why Jesus took cross, why Jesus died on the cross in Galatian ah, see look at this this is another gift I wanted Galatians 3.13 I opened the Bible exactly that I am getting Christ ransomed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us it is written curse be everyone who hangs on a tree. Christ ransomed us from all the curses of our family tree. No matter whatever our grand grand grandparents happened, but Christ already took all that curses upon the cross. Do you believe this? Have an act of faith. Believe this, all the ancestral sins and our own sins and the future sins which is going to happen. You see we pray every day, Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the, sin of the, sin of the world. Once a woman asked me, Thomas, you mean sin of the world means even all the sins which the next generation or next 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 generation going to commit even that is taken over by Jesus exactly then I asked her will he come again to take that sin No. So, when he came once, he died once, he offered the sacrifice once for the sin which from the Adam to the last man in the world. Do you believe this? Then she said, Thomas, I never believed that. I thought he has taken over the sin of the past. Oh, then I said, then that is a sin. What is the sin? The biggest sin is lack of faith. Because Jesus said, if you believe, you are saved. <laughs> so in you, the salvation is not fully happening because you are not believing in the fullness of Christ that Christ has come 
and he already died ransomed on the cross taking the sins of the whole humanity in which your parents your grandparents your husband your wife your children your grandchildren your grand grand grandchildren which is going to be born everything is there this is a good news ah that is the good news if you think oh ah, my uh, husband is a great sinner my wife is a great sinner they will go to hell that is not a good news my son is doing all bad things so oh, or so many people are homosexuals so many people are lesbian all these things but jesus took all that sin upon him once again lamb of god say everybody lamb of god who took away the sin of the world this is the first announcement of john the baptist introducing jesus in john chapter 1 so now this woman caught in adultery according to law of moses must be condemned to death but jesus saved her jesus did not say you should not kill her jesus said yes stone her but any of you who has not done a sin who has who has no sin let him first stone her through that word that word what is that word that is jesus himself we must always think all of us have sin because of the original sin of adam but jesus came to take away that sin but in spite of that we still having many sins because the world is not yet fully redeemed so that is why we have daily holy mass we have we can go for confession to clean our sins because he already removed so that is why sacrament is a grace what is grace what is the meaning of grace we say every day hail mary full of grace what is the meaning of grace grace means the participation of god's life into human life catechism 1997 1997 the teaching of the church says grace is participation in the life of god it introduces into the intimacy of trinitarian life by baptism christian participates in the grace of christ in the grace of christ i am sorry i did not look at the watch is it over now to shall we stop now what is the time now okay so we will conclude now okay then after we can have a personal meeting and prayer over etc so let us now ah let me complete john's gospel quickly we are in john's gospel chapter 8 what is chapter 8 the water chain to wine is continuing in its highest form we generally think about this woman only that her life is changed but no first the men who came to stone her then i changed imagine can you imagine such a change they were so adamant we must kill her because the law of moses said yes the law of moses said the law of moses must be executed but even that changed 
That's what we have to understand. The law of Moses changed by coming of the Messiah. Now a new law has come. What is this new law? The Ten Commandments is imbibed in one law, one commandment. What is one commandment? Love one another as I loved you. I loved you, the executioners. I did not blame you. I said you stone. But any one of you who has no sin, let him stone. He said with great love. And to this woman who is an adulteress, standing in front of her, she is not con he is not condemning her. I do not condemn you. What is our situation in this world? When we see somebody is doing something, a sin, we immediately condemn them. Don't go with that person. It's a sinner. Now that is why many people criticize Holy Father, Pope Francis. What is he doing? He is supporting homosexuals. Once in, in an interview with the Holy Father in the flight, the journalist asks, Holy Father, the way you are speaking, you are supporting the homosexuals. You are accepting them. Then he said, listen to me. Suppose you or any of you have four children. One of them is a homosexual. What will you do? Or any family, he has four children, one of them is a homosexual. What should we do? Should we send him out? We can't because he is our son. Correct? He is your son, you cannot throw him out. You have to accept him like Christ accepted the sinners and have dialogue with him, pray with him and asking the divine mercy, divine grace change him. Not rejecting them, but prayerfully accepting. That is what I say accepting. That is what I say blessing. Okay, so water changed to wine. Chapter 8. Chapter 9, Jesus healing a man who was born blind, from birth onwards he is blind. He came, he, is, he spat on the earth and took a, made it a clay and pasted it on his. So this pit is the grace of God and the earth is the Adamic nature. He changed that Adamic nature by his divine spit. Understand? Like water changed to wine. This man who was born blind, his life changed. His eyes opened. I can see! I can see! I can. You must watch my film, animation film. I am saying all these things because in the animation film I wrote script with this emotion, with this feeling. I can see, I can see you, I can see you, I can see my God. <laughs> change, water, change to wine. Chapter 10, chapter 10 he says again a theology of resurrection. I have come that you may have a life. The devil come to destroy and steal your life. But I have come to give you life. The two, di the, the dichotomy, the devil, we should understand the devil is only a creation. Devil is only a creature. Devil came because of the angels fallen nature. Angels were God's creation. In Catechism, paragraph 395 says, Devil's, Satan's power is not infinite. Whereas God's power is infinite. Devil is only a creature. But God is the creator. The Almighty. So we should not give so much. We must understand this. Yes, devil has power. But God has all 
almighty power and he jesus has already conquered the devil through the passion death and resurrection like in an election there is two party but in the election one party failed the other party won so the party which won become the ruling party he will rule the kingdom the party failed is existing but has no power we call it opposition party so the devil is an opposition party but god is the ruling party you are with which party <laughs> we are with the ruling party he rules us we are his citizen he care for us suppose your child is playing on the ground and the dog is coming although you are inside the church you are you are watching on the child play and as soon as you saw a dog is coming to disturb the child you ran out and pick the child will you allow that child will be disturbed by the dog you will not allow so god as a father as a mother is watching over you 24/7 watching over you he is watching over us believe that so jesus said in chapter 10 this mystery the devil comes to destroy and steal but i come to give you life in abundance in this chapter jesus said i give my life in order to take up that is the resurrection the whole spirituality is to be understood in the death and resurrection our human nature must die with christ and risen with christ it's already done because through incarnation we were all in his body that body is lifted on the cross in that body all the sin is crushed and killed and buried so where is our sin now is buried where is the sin of all humanity where is the sin of all our family is buried now what will happen he will raise in the resurrection a new humanity comes a risen humanity that is christian life christianity began after the resurrection believe believe and then chapter 11 so he comes in the house of his but today we heard the two ladies of bethany they have a brother lazarus even when jesus was a boy he used to play with them very good friends they were suddenly lazarus become sick it was a <laughs> plan of jesus he wanted to use lazarus as a pilot plan about to show his resurrection so lazarus sick he died the lady sent somebody you just tell him the one whom you love is sick but he did not come he wanted to come only after his death only after four days four days are over the dead man already become decay now he is coming oh lord if you would have been here our brother would not have died your brother will resurrect now martha said yes yes i know in the last day he will resurrect see that is our faith that is what every day we say we believe in the resurrection of our body can you believe that in the last day when jesus come again the whole humanity died and become like dust will rise up with him so martha believed that 
Now Jesus said, where is he buried? Come Lord, see. And Jesus said, take away the stone. Now again Martha says, Lord, now it's already four days are over. It may be sticky. Did I not tell you, if you believe, you will see the glory of God? Yes, 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 Lord. I believe. I believe. And now, now, Jesus said, Father, I thank you. You always hear my prayer. Lazarus, come out. The dead man, whose body already decaying, came to new life. Water changed to new wine. This is Christianity. This is Christian power. So that is what the passion, death and resurrection. So let us believe that Jesus in us, I pray for you now, generally for a healing and liberation. Now you believe in this water chain to wine. For your own personal life, whatever is disturbing you is because you are still on the old nature. Believe in Christ. Christ has come to make you a new nature. It's not our action, Christ's action. Lazarus is dead. He has nothing to do. He is not doing anything. Christ is doing by his word. So also each one of us, Christ is doing through each one of us. Every one of us receiving this transformation. What is your difficulty? Your personal problem, your husband's problem, your wife's problem, your children's problem, your in-laws problem, your generation problem. Believe, Jesus, here I am. I believe you changed the whole problems into a new wine, to a risen power. Let us praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, anoint us, Lord. Open our anointing. Open the healings. Open the transformation. Bless every one of us. Empower us, Lord. Open anointing. Open this transformation. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. We sing a song. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Everybody, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Melt us. Mold us, fill us, and use us. Melt us, mold us, fill us, and transform us into a new creation. Oh Holy Spirit, oh Lord Jesus, you are really present here. Your power, your transforming power, your word, we heard now. We believe all what is in our life. You have already changed through your passion, death and resurrection. Through your incarnation, we are already in your body. Through your passion, you cancelled our sin. Through your resurrection, you already made us and our whole family 
into a new creation and you ascended to heaven taking us into heaven now we are all with the father in the right hand of the father in heaven with jesus thank you jesus hallelujah 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 shala halabala 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 now i pray for a healing i pray for healing and deliverance in the name of jesus in the name of jesus all blood vessel tissues bones and muscles come back to normal healthy condition in the name of jesus be healed all those who are now listening to me now jesus is touching you now jesus is empowering you jesus loves you he lives in you he is in front of you he is here with you shala halabala 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 oh lord now offer your difficulty what is your problem offer that to jesus oh lord jesus i believe you are the lamb of god who already took away all my problems i believe lord i believe i believe shala halabala halabala now right now somebody is getting a strong healing of the back pain somebody whose back pain had such a pain now the lord is healing somebody from the back pain as a confirmation a sign of all what we heard today and another healing is a lump a lump like a lemon a small lemon is disappearing a lump is disappearing shala halabala 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 and the lord is anointing somebody to become a preacher that all what you heard now is anointing you to be a preacher you feel a motivation yes this i should proclaim this is the good news this i should proclaim yes the lord is anointing you to proclaim this good news shala halabala 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 this is the good news this is the good news jesus is asking us to proclaim and all those who are watching this in the online in the youtube later on this will be uploaded in the youtube and all those who will be watching in the youtube we all together pray for you that this is a event in happening in london and through here once upon a time the great britain was ruling the whole world the same way the light christ will rule over you christ will liberate you christ will empower you christ will heal you through this episode praise you jesus thank you lord hallelujah hallelujah lord bless you bless you and anybody who want to communicate with me any of this healing you can send me a voice message in my whatsapp number 0091-944-719-6033 now let us bow down and receive the final blessing of the lord let us believe the lord is blessing us oh sacrament most holy Oh, sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving to every moment dine. Oh, sacrament most holy, oh, sacrament divine. all praise and all thanks give every moment dine let us adore the lord and let us receive his blessing thank you lord thank you jesus 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 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So let us remember in this session what particular points you liked, you are touched. Let us thank God for that. Oh Lord, I thank you for this particular point. What is that particular point you liked? Just remember that. I thank you for this. I take home these things. So now you can go. Uh, I will come to you and I will pray for you, each one of you. But I conclude this session now here. But I will come to you and pray for you and uh, those who want, I can spend time in giving counseling or anything what you need. Okay? So thank you very much for coming for this. God bless you. Bye-bye. 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 We have tomorrow evening. Where is that place? Holy Family Church. Holy Family Church. Tomorrow evening. 7.30 onwards. Tomorrow evening, 7.30 onwards, we are in Holy Family Church. You can come there too. So, God bless you. Keep in contact in my YouTube channel. We have everyday sessions and you can also communicate your personal problems. I shall be happy through the grace of God to pray for you. Amen. പരിശുദ്ധ പരമദിവ്യ കാരുണ്യത്തിന് നേരവും ആരാധനയും സ്തുതിയും മഹത്വം ഉണ്ടായിരിക്കും പരിശുദ്ധ പരമദിവ്യ കാരുണ്യത്തിന് നേരവും ആരാധനയും മഹത്വം ഉണ്ടാകട്ടെ പരിശുദ്ധ പരമദിവ്യ കാരുണ്യത്തിന് നേരവും ആരാധനയും മഹത്വം ഉണ്ടാകട്ടെ ആ മീൻ